Hello, and welcome to Historic Naval Swords and Relics. I'm Sim Comfort, author and publisher. Today we're going to examine the fighting sword of Captain Philip Broke of HMS Shannon and his 15-minute fight with the USS Chesapeake, the shortest frigate action in the history of the Royal Navy. First, I'd like to put this battle into context of the War of 1812 by looking at the USS Constitution and her victories against the British. The Americans had little money, but a desire to play a major role at sea because this, from the sea is trade, and just like their British forebears, trade was everything. The result was to design and build a few super frigates, with Constitution being the most successful and important. She was 175 feet long at the waterline and 2,200 2, tons burthen and mounted 44 guns. By comparison, a typical British 74-gun ship was under 175 feet long, with a tonnage of around 1,600. Although she rated as a 44-gun heavy frigate, she regularly carried over 50 guns, with them being 20 by 32 pounders and 30 times 24 pounders. As a note, notice how she is painted, black and white checkerboard along the gun deck. We'll come back to that. So when the war with Britain commenced and Constitution was on tour, the results could be predicted. On the 19th of August, 1812, she met HMS Guerra, 38 guns, length 155 feet and, nine, and 1,092 tons. Constitution was almost twice as large. After a few exchanges of cannon fire between the ships, Captain Isaac Hull maneuvered Constitution into an advantageous position within 25 yards of Guerra. He then ordered a full double-loaded broadside of grape and round shot, which took out Guerra's mizzenmast. Guerra's maneuverability decreased with her mizzenmast dragging in the water, and she collided with Constitution, entangling her bowsprit in Constitution's mizzen rigging. This left only Guerra's bow guns capable of effective fire. At one point, the two ships rotated together counterclockwise with Constitution continuing to fire broadsides. Within, when the two ships pulled apart, the force of the bowsprit's extraction sent shockwaves through Guerra's rigging. Her foremast collapsed, and that brought the mainmast down shortly afterwards. Guerra was now a dismasted, unmanageable hulk, with close to a third of her crew wounded or killed, while Constitution remained largely intact the British surrendered. After transferring prisoners to Constitution, Guerra was so damaged she was burned the next day. On 29 December, Constitution, now under the command of William Bainbridge, met with HMS Java, 38 guns, under Captain Henry Lambert. Java was almost identical in measurements to the Guerra, so a distinct advantage to the Constitution. But a Royal Naval frigate wasn't about to run. At the initial hail from Bainbridge, Java answered with a broadside that severely damaged Constitution's rigging. She was able to recover and returned a series of broadsides to Java. A shot from Java destroyed Constitution's helm, so Bainbridge directed the crew to steer her manually using the tiller for the remainder of the engagement. Bainbridge was wounded twice during the battle, Java's bowsprit became entangled in Constitution's rigging, as in the battle with the Guerre, allowing Bainbridge to continue raking her with broadsides. Java's foremast collapsed, sending her fighting tops crashing down through two decks. Bainbridge drew off to make emergency repairs and reapproached Java an hour later. She lay in shambles, an unmanageable wreck, and a badly wounded crew, and she surrendered. Bainbridge determined that Java was far too damaged to retain as a prize and ordered her burned, but not before having the helm salvaged and installed on board Constitution. So, during the first 12 months of the war, the Americans were making mincemeat of British frigates, 
In fact, in addition to Constitution's two victories, there were three others. Wasp beat Frolic, the United States beat Macedonian, and the Hornets sank the Peacock. Something had to be done. Enter Philip Broke and the Shannon. There wasn't anything special about Shannon, similar dimensions to both Gear and Java. But Philip Broke was exceptional due to his full mastery of naval cannon and training of his men in gunnery, and he wanted revenge. Stationed at Halifax, Broke cruised up and down the North New England seaboard, hoping that an American frigate would come out, but nothing happened. On the 1st of June, 1813, Shannon was off Boston Light, and Broke knew that the USS Chesapeake, which was just a little larger than the Shannon, with both frigates having 28 long 18-pounders, plus carronades, as armament, so he wrote a letter to Captain James Lawrence of the Chesapeake. Dear Sir, as the Chesapeake appears now ready for sea, I request you will do me the favor to meet the Shannon, ship to ship, to try the fortune of our respective flags. I will send all other ships beyond the power of interfering with us and meet you wherever is agreeable to you. We are short of provisions and water and cannot stay long. Broke didn't have long to wait. In very light breeze of five knots, the Chesapeake was free of Boston Harbor by 1.30 p.m. But it took another three hours to draw close to, to the Shannon. At 5.10, Broke was satisfied that his ship was ready for battle. And with the enemy closing, he mustered the crew on the main and on the quarter decks where all could see him. Broke spoke to the men with a quiet confidence. He urged them to show that there are Englishmen in this frigate who still know how to fight. Don't try to dismast her. Fire into her quarters. Main deck to main deck. Quarter deck to quarter deck. Kill the men and the ship is yours. Don't hit them about the head, for they wear steel caps, but give it to them through the body. Don't cheer. Go quietly to your quarters. I feel sure you will do your duty and remember the blood of hundreds of your countrymen has to be avenged. Like Broke, Captain Lawrence addressed the men of the Chesapeake and reminded them of their patriotic duty, that the Americans had won every action since the war began, and called his men to peacock her, my lads, peacock her, sink her, <laughs> okay? So at 540, Lawrence, who held the weather gauge, altered course to starboard, only 50 yards from the Shannon's bow, and squared her main yard as the Americans gave three rousing cheers. Ominously, the British did not reply. What Broke wanted to do was to bring the Chesapeake ever closer so the power, the full power of his broadside would be most effective at point blank range. Lawrence may have expected Broke to maneuver, but Broke wanted a steady gun platform for the best result, so he waited and waited. Broke had planned each gun's target. He had a small carronade on the poop deck and two nine-pounders forward, which were ordered to destroy the American ship's wheel and kill anyone standing nearby. As the Chesapeake ranged up, Broke picked up a grenade and carefully trimmed the quick-match fuse to a length with his penknife. It was a very short fuse. At 5.50, the general action commenced with Shannon's precision-trained gunners firing on their appointed targets with devastating effect. Captain Lawrence was wounded. Most of the officers on the quarterdeck were killed or wounded, with Lawrence remaining on deck with a musket ball in his leg below the knee. Because Chesapeake was hailing to port, her guns were firing too low to create significant damage to the Shannon. So Lawrence left it up to gain some distance between the ships. But the maneuver resulted in Chesapeake exposing her stern to Shannon's eager gunners. At this point, the helm was smashed with Lawrence left standing amongst the wreckage. 
As Chesapeake turned to starboard, she suddenly lost way with her turn into the wind. Broke could see the Chesapeake was out of control and he had won the battle in only seven or eight minutes. At 558, a cartridge box on the American quarterdeck exploded, probably caused by Broke's hand, hand grenade. Anxious not to let Chesapeake get away, Broke altered course slightly to starboard, reduced speed to bring Shannon alongside the Chesapeake. Lawrence was trying to urge his men to fire faster when he was hit by a musket ball in the groin, a fatal wound. Before he was taken below, he famously called out, don't give up the ship, which became the battle call of the U.S. Navy. At six o'clock, the Chesapeake smashed into Shannon's starboard bow, a shattered port quarter hooked into the Shannon's anchors. Broke grabbed the opportunity and ordered the ships tied together. All around him, men were falling, but he seemed to live a charmed life. Now he called to boarders. He stepped onto the gunwale and raised his sword, raised his sword and yelled out, follow me who can and then jumped down into the enemy quarterdeck. Shannon's piled in behind him. Acting chaplain Samuel Lawrence foolishly attacked Broke with a loaded pistol aimed at his head. A swift backstroke easily disarmed the man with his arm nearly severed. The fight between the Shannons and remaining Americans was swiftly over. But before the final stroke, Captain Broke was attacked from behind and struck a savage blow to the head with a cutlass. He collapsed on deck into semi-consciousness. His men came to his aid and were about to carry him back to his ship when he called, don't forget my good old sword. After returning to Halifax, Broke's wound was treated and Captain Lawrence was buried with full military honors. The final account showed Shannon with 23 killed and 56 wounded, Chesapeake, 48 killed and 99 wounded. Broke never went to sea again, so the service life of his good old sword stopped with the capture of the Chesapeake. Broke's granddaughter married a Somerez, another very famous English naval family. In time, all of the Broke relics passed through the Somerez family via Broke's granddaughter. And it was from Lord Victor de Somerez that Broke's sword was sold to a private collector. The sword is absolutely marvelous. The condition is very fine for the sword, the scabbard, the black leather shoulder belt, and the copper gilt belt plate. The overall size of the sword is 32.25 inches and the blade is 29 and a half inches. The grip is a bit large, indicating that Broke had large hands. The cutler who fashioned the hilt fitted the blade and supplied the belt plate with Francis Circle II who specialized in fine fighting swords. Broke passed his lieutenancy in 1797 following the Battle of St. Vincent. He was on board HMS Southampton, and it's reckoned that's when Thurkel assembled the sword for Broke. However, the wide double-edged blade, which is razor sharp, has three narrow fullers at the fort and marked Andrea Fiar on each of the fullers on both the obverse and the reverse of the blade. This all indicates that the blade is much older than the 1790s. Where the blade came from, we do not know. It certainly looks a family heirloom and actually may have come from Broke's ancestor, Captain Packington Broke, who fought at the Battle of Sol Bay in 1672. Or as Broke was at the Battle of Cape St. Vincent in 1797, he could have picked up the sword, picked up a sword with this blade at that engagement. What we can be sure of is that the blade is German and the Andrea Fara mark indicates it's of highest quality. The Reverend J.G. Brighton in his 1866 biography of Broke knew the sword and described it as having been used with a backward stroke to disarm Mr. Livermore and that the sword had a Toledo bay, blade but mounted with regulation ivory and gold wire. This reference to Toledo Bay is his confusion over the Andrea Farra marks. To finish this talk, think back to the four images of the Chesapeake and Shannon in action. 
They were painted by J.C. Shetke and based on the drawings by Lieutenant R.H. King, Royal Navy, who was on board the Shannon. Notice that the hull for both the ships is painted black with a single yellow strake and not in the checkerboard pattern we see on Constitution today. What happened was that the United States Navy adopted a black hole with the single yellow strake during the war. The British copied it in hope of luring unsuspecting craft into captivity, and it worked. If you like this video, please subscribe. It's free to do, and hit the like button. Look for more stories to come from this channel, and check out www.sincomfort.co.uk for books about naval swords and history. Bye for now.